Today's Toy Spar, we're having a look at the DC Collectibles, DC Comics, Super Villains, Deathstroke action figure. Spot was able to finally get his hands on this particular one. Really wanted to get him, and surprisingly, he was very hard to find in local comic book stores. But as soon as he did show up, I was able to snag myself one of these. Uh, this comes with some from the same line, actually the same line as the Joker and Black Manta. Also came to us from the same line as the, the Captain Cold. On the side of the package, sculpted by Jean Saint Jean, includes sidearm, sword, and knife. On the other side of the box, a really nice silhouette, whether you can, I don't know if you can see that or not, nice silhouette of uh, Deathstroke. And certainly on the back, decorated soldier Slade Wilson volunteered for an experimental treatment to increase his strength, speed, and endurance. Upon leaving the military, Wilson began a new life as a mercenary, the most dangerous the world has ever seen. Also available, Super Villains Black Adam and Super Villains Black Manta. For more product info, for product info and more, you can also go to dccomics.com. There's also a comic shop locator service at comicshoplocator.com, which is probably something that, depending on where you're located, I get a lot of questions from where can you get pieces like this? Well, you can also go to your comic shop locator and find out some real small, real gem stores in your area. Um, but uh, needless to say, though, what I am going to do is I'm going to take a break, going to get this opened up when we come back. We are going to get a better look at the DC Comics Super Villains Deathstroke action figure. There's more heading your way, guys. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. So, having a look at the accessories that come with Deathstroke. For starters, let's zoom in and have a look at his gun. Which, if you ask me, kind of has a Judge Dread look to it. It looks like something like the Peacekeeper handgun that we would have seen. Not probably so much in the Judge Dread comics, but probably in the uh, the original uh, Sylvester Stallone Judge Dread of what 1995. Some nice detailing, although really there is no paint or anything on it other than the singular dark gray that they've put on. You know, of course, the the main main coloring of the uh, pistol. Uh, also. You get yourself a small hunting knife, which was rewarded with a little more paint than that of the pistol. This one, you actually get a little bit of silver on the handle. And if that is not certainly enough silver for you, then you, you get this really large bladed sword that comes with Deathstroke as well. Uh, some small touches, but appreciated um, touches. You see some scratches, some dents. It looks like he either had forged the sword himself, or he has used it quite a lot. I'm thinking probably more of the second one. There's a little bit of paint, a little bit of a darker silver on the handle, but overall I think this is a really neat looking bladed weapon. Now all three weapons luckily can be housed on Deathstroke. We take the figure itself, and we'll actually look at the sword last. The, the handgun can clip right onto the side. And actually, this is one problem that I have with this piece, is just where you're housing the weapons. For starters, this section right here, if you can hear it, sounds extremely brittle. So I would say, if you're ever planning on probably putting Deathstroke, packing him away, or maybe displaying him later, I probably would suggest keeping the, the, the handgun, the pistol, in here, just to prevent this from bending or snapping or anything like that. But it, you can see that it houses the pistol. It doesn't really so much snap into place as it's kind of just a friction grip to keep the pistol in bay. I don't have so much of an issue with the pistol itself. It's when it, we start looking at the small hunting knife or small uh, knife that he does come with. The knife itself is supposed to really sit into this holster here. And uh, you kind of have to... You kind of have to have the blade like this versus this. You can see how it follows the shape of the holster. So make sure that's important when you put the blade in. But really, this section right here, this section right here, kind of gets in the way. You kind of have to lift this up and slide this into place. But I had a tough time that when you start lifting the, the, the knife out, 
it butts right, you can see it right there, it butts right underneath that belt. So you kind of have to pull it to the side and pull it out this way. It's not an easy task to say the least, but you kind of have to do some adjusting to get this out. Lastly, on the very back, there is a T-peg, you see right there, and the sword, if we flip it around, right there, you can see where that lines up, just like that. So we're gonna take that and peg this into place, just like so. And you can see he houses his sword. I'm not sure the realistic, how this would work in, in the actual comics, whether it's just a magnetized thing or, you know, but needless to say, it, he houses the sword. I would be probably more inclined to have the sword in his hand. So for that, we'll just take it and slide it into place like so. Um, but having a look though at the figure, the figure is really nice. I think uh, DC Collectibles did a, a really a good job on the figure itself. Zooming into his face, let's start there and then we'll work our way down, so to speak. The face is a nice, familiar yet updated spin on Deathstroke. He's of course still got his yellow side and of course the blue side of his mask, but this time it's probably a little more darker and as you can see that uh, the orange is more of a dark gold color than it is a yellow color. And the dark blue, actually the front of his face is more like a plate than it is where the blue was you know, one, one piece and then the yellow was on the side. It, it's got more of a, I want to say a cybernetic, that may not be the best way to describe it, but it's got more of a, uh, definitely a more uh, technological look to it. Uh, but the detailing is very nice on it. I kind of wish the eye, the section around the eye was a little darker, darker black around that red, but overall still pretty good indeed. He's also got another familiar sight being the chainmail front section. I don't know if the camera is probably picking it up, but I like where, depending on how you're tilting this chainmail, the lighter purple, which is the majority of the chainmail itself, has these little speckles of light to it. It's almost got like an opal kind of, I don't know, kind of what you would see where if you tip it ever so slightly, you can see this kind of lighter purple sheen that's being projected from this scaled, um, you know, the scaled mail that he's got on the front here. The rest of his body though is just adorned with this gold, uh, this dark orange gold color. He's got several different belts, little compartments, none of which can be opened, but I mean, some really nice detail here. Uh, then the majority of the rest of his body is still the lighter color, somewhat than what we would saw with the arms, but he's also got the outlining here of this lighter again it's kind of like a purplish gray but it works really really well and then you've got these spikes on the boots there uh, all the colors really for how different they are all work very well together um, certainly when you start looking at the figure as as a whole it, it it's an update but yet again it's it's a very familiar look to Deathstroke uh, his articulation, well, his head, does move up, does move down. It doesn't really move too much, though, whereas the majority of the movement can come from moving his head left and right. I guess to some extent there is a pivot there as well. Uh, these shoulders do move out, and luckily these shoulder pad sections are hinged as well. So the arms are not restricted at all by having these shoulder pads there. There is a rotation uh, right at the bicep section there a single bend in the elbow, a rotation right at the gauntlet here. So this whole section right here will rotate. And uh, it doesn't look like his wrist or anything like that is on an independent swivel. It's just all one piece here. Uh, unfortunately, he has no waist swivel, which due to the likelihood of how everything was sculpted in, I can really justify and see why they wouldn't have put any swivel there. Um, there goes the handgun. Again, it's just a you know, friction forced, uh, pegged into place there. Uh, the legs go forward, they go back, and uh, he does have a bend at the knee. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't have any swivel. Like this section here doesn't actually move out. They're just left and right, back and forth. Um, I, 
it's kind of weird because some DC collectible figures have you know the uh, the additional articulation in the legs and then some of them don't so I'm surprised that Deathstroke doesn't luckily though he does still have a swivel in the uh, the thigh area or kind of at the mid thigh cut there of course uh, once again mentioned he's got the bend in the knee and a bend and uh, kind of slightly pivot but mostly just a bend in the foot um, unfortunately he has no uh, display stand which would have been a nice touch I think to say the least but unfortunately he does not have any sort of display stand um, I, I think he's he is a nice looking piece. Um, it's it's really a shame that he could not have come with a display stand. Kind of would have just given him just the the opportunity to do a little more than just what you can do by having him standing flat. I guess also that could be my slight one gripe with the figure is that he doesn't stand. He stands well, but he doesn't stand as good as he could, and. Uh, it's just a shame that he doesn't have a display stand. I mean, he doesn't have a peg hole on the underside of his foot, but he doesn't come with a display stand. Um, also, you know, I think as a whole, once again, cost of some of these pieces, uh, Deathstroke, I think I ended up paying about $18, $19 for him. Um, I got off real lucky considering that, again, some of the costs of what these pieces are now starting to go for um, it's a very familiar sight to start seeing DC collectible figures and uh, some Marvel figures already surpassing a $22 to $25 price point. This figure really belongs in more the scope of a $16 to $18 price point. I really don't know if I would start paying $24, $25 for him. But if you can get him for a good price, I think Deathstroke is a solid figure to add to your collection. Today's Toy Spot, we're having a look at the DC Collectibles. We're having a look at the DC Super Villains Deathstroke figure. As always, thank you guys for watching. Spot certainly appreciates it. And stay tuned, Spot's going to have more Toy Spots and other spots heading your way. Thanks for watching. See you next time.